middle of your speech, and you can call me out on being a liberal snowflake or whatever yeah, about my feelings. Um, but then you, in the middle of your speech, you, I mean, I think this was hate speech, you made fun of transgenders. Um, so well, I made fun of one person who grabbed me by the back of the neck and threatened me with violence, to be fair. I mean, yes, but also Caitlyn Jenner. And it's, you, you seem to be making, you, no, no, no. I don't want, no. You made it, you were clearly making jokes at the expense of transgender people. So my question is, where do you draw the line between being a mensch and clearly offending people? Like, where do you draw the line? Okay, so uh, for me, right, so, so for me, so for me, if I, if I, if I coldly and clearly state a fact and you're offended by the fact, that's not me being responsible for offending you, that's me saying a fact and you being offended. As far as me making jokes about Zoe Turr, my general rule is that if somebody grabs me by the back of the neck and threatens me with violence on national television, I have the right to make fun of them. That's, that's just as when I was at University of Wisconsin, okay, but, if people are but, gonna chant at me and yell at me, then I'm not gonna treat them with, with courtesy because they are not deserving of courtesy. Courtesy is something that you earn by being courteous. Okay, fine, I, I understand that, but uh, like, it just seems a little bit like uh, hypocritical to brag about the fact that you openly humiliated someone on national television while um, also like telling people to be mentioned. That's just that's a little well. Bit I mean, it, 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 let's put it this way: my, my belief is in mutually assured destruction. So if you're going to, <laughs> so if you, so if you attempt to to again do me physical harm on national TV, then uh, I'm I'm not going to treat you with with a level of respect that you have not earned. That's that's. I mean, I'm, I'm treating you with respect, and we disagree, right? I mean, <laughs> so, because you're courteous. So thank you for that. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. I don't know how many of you have seen this on CNN Headline News. I had exactly this debate on Dr. Drew's show uh, a few months ago. It was about three months ago. And it made, the, it, was, it was, I think, the number one story on Facebook and Twitter for about three days. Uh, because this is why they don't have me on CNN that often. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, they, they, had on, they were talking about Caitlyn Jenner. And, uh, and the question of the day was why Caitlyn Jenner should or should not receive the ESPN Courage Award. Because, as we all know, you know, the courage to have a boob job, make millions of dollars off of it, have a mental illness that's exploited by television cameras is exactly the same as the courage it took for men to get off boats at the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. I mean, it's, courage is courage is courage, guys. So, it's, so um, they, had me on this, they, they had me on this show, and they decided that they were going to seat me directly next to a transgender woman, meaning a man who is delusional and thinks he's a woman. And, uh, and so I'm sitting next to this, this dude whose name is Zoe Turr. His former name is Bob Turr. And uh, really, and he's, and, he's, uh, and he's sitting next to me, and this topic comes up. And what I said, they, they were going around discussing whether or not Caitlyn Jenner should be, was courageous or not courageous. And finally, I just said, I don't understand why we're all humoring mass delusion. Why are we, why are we, why is the public humoring a delusion? It's not kind to the mentally ill. It's terrible for the mentally ill. As somebody whose grandfather was schizophrenic, it would have been really, really quite terrible if the entire society had said to him, you know what, Nate, you're totally right. The radio is talking to you, right? It wouldn't have been beneficial to him. It was much more beneficial to him that he was institutionalized, given lithium, and then healed, basically, and was able to live a decent life. You know, the, the idea that transgender surgery accomplishes anything for people who are quote-unquote transgender is nonsense. The, the suicide rates are precisely the same before and after the surgery, and they are both in excess of 40%, which is unbelievably high. The idea that society is responsible for transgender suicide is absolute garbage. It is not true. Okay, the fact is that even in, the, they've done polls of this. There was a poll from the Anderson School at UCLA, and they found that even transgender people who say they're not questioned about being transgender, they have exactly the same rate of suicidality, meaning that this is a mental illness, because that rate of suicidality is so far beyond, beyond anything that has ever been experienced in any population of humans ever. Seriously, the only comparable rate of suicide in the, in, to the transgender community today is Jews living under Nazi German rule. That is the only time in human history that there has been that rate of suicide. So that, so I promise you, transgenders are not being treated like Jews under Nazi German rule, so it clearly is not societal impact that is making people suicidal. What's making people suicidal is that this is a mental illness, and, what the, and, and it, is, it is barbaric to suggest that a man can become a woman and a woman can become a man with a snip of the knife. It's, it's, it's horrifying, and it is mutilation, and it is brutal, and the people who are pushing this have no sympathy for the people who are actually suffering from it. They're forwarding mental illness. They're forwarding mental illness to kids because they want to teach this to children now. And this is one where you're on, I mean, these people, what's, what's, it is unbelievable to me that the left suggests that we're the party of anti-science. Okay, they are the party of vaccines are bad and men can magically become women through some magic man to woman machine, right? The, the, it's, it's such utter nonsense. Every cell of Caitlyn Jenner's body has a Y chromosome, except ironically for his sperm cells, right? So the, so the idea that these are, that these are women is just, it's, it's utter tripe. 
And I, I have to say, I am, I am, I am enjoying a little bit how the uh, how the transgender movement is destroying feminism. That's kind of fun, because because the feminists have always argued that men and women are inherently different, right? Men and women are inher- and women are have a beautiful, unique thing to bring to the world. And then, of course, they say a bunch of other crap. But that's the part what they say is true. And now they're saying, but transgenderism says that men and women are exactly the same and can randomly shift. It's weird to hear Hillary Clinton, for example, say. Caitlyn Jenner is a beautiful, lovely woman, and then in the same sentence say, and we need a woman president. It's like, well, that's kind of weird. Why? If men and women are exactly the same, then why do we need a woman president? Right? Men and women are exactly the same. So if Barack Obama, without any changes to himself, but if, if Obama really wanted to jack her in this election, he would do that. He'd come out two days before the election, and he'd say, I'm the first woman president. Right? And, it, <laughs> And change nothing about himself, right? Because transgenderism suggests you don't have to make physical changes, you don't have to change your dress, you don't have to change anything, right? If you just decide one day that you, if Charles Bronson one day decided to saunter on in, take off his gun belt, and mosey on in and sashay on in to the to the ladies, to the ladies' restroom for a little sitsy on the toilet, then you know, then he then he would be a woman. This is the way that this. It, what I love about this particular debate is I think enough Americans are not insane. <laughs> that they will buy the argument that a man is a man and a woman is a woman, considering they have known this since they were small children. My daughter's 21 months old. Caitlin, Caitlin Jenner honored with the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs. Did she deserve it? Was it the right choice? Here she was last night on ABC. Take a look. All across the world, at this very moment, there are young people coming to terms with being transgender. They're learning that they're different, and they're trying to figure out how to handle that on top of every other problem that a teenager has. They're getting bullied. They're getting beaten up. They're getting murdered. And they're committing suicide. But this transition has been harder on me than anything I could imagine. And that's the case for so many others besides me. For that reason alone, trans people deserve something vital. They deserve your respect. I'd like to thank personally my buddy Diane Sawyer. You know, you can only tell your story the first time once, and Diane, you did it so authentically and so gracefully. Joining me now in the audience, Shagun Odu Olowu, entertainment journalist, Zoe Tour, pilot and reporter who herself is transgender, and Ben Shapiro, senior editor, Breitbart News, author of Bullies. Ben, did she deserve this award? For what? For, for courageously coming forward, for having been an athlete of great prowess, and now fighting a new battle. Uh, what exactly is the battle? I mean, self-definition is what you do, and my baby's doing it 18 months old. I wasn't aware that you get a medal for it. She good? I think she's a fraud. I thought the message and the messenger were, were wrong. I was in the audience at the ESPYs, and if you want to talk about courage, she said it herself in her speech that she retreated to her mansion on, on, in the hill. And was where was she in the 70s when, gay, when the LGBT community was fighting for acceptance? Where was she in the 80s when the AIDS epidemic was ravaging the she LGBT community? She was hiding, community? feeling bad about hiding. being transgender. Where was she in the 90s when shows like 90210, no, Melrose I, Place, and Will and Grace were bringing people, gay people to the forefront? Where was she in 2000s? She couldn't when come forward yet. My thing is this. She's a, she's a 65-year-old rich white woman that decided to do this, but don't tell me you're walking to the truth for other transgender kids. Kids of color who don't have that war chest of money to get the surgery to look like she looks. They're not going to get the cover okay. of Vanity Fair. Regardless, so don't tell me that she is going to stand on the banks waving her hand as the re- beacon for transgender when there's a river of blood of people that die. Okay, regardless of who the messenger is, okay, whether you like it or her not or think that this is an authentic person or not or her, her intent, she is bringing a conversation to the forefront that is helping people better understand, not you, unfortunately, better understand the transgender community, have more empathy, have more tolerance, and that is saving lives. Because as she stated, there are so many transgender youths and adults that are victims of violence, that are beat up, that are bullied because of the discrimination. So thank God that now she is mainstreaming it so people can better understand it and have tolerance. Sam, so, so, wait. Sam, Sam, that's dead wrong. Wait, 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 she lives in the she lives in the most accepting city in the in, in, oh my in, in the state. And go do that in Alabama. Be, be a hero. Be yeah. a hero. No. Listen to Zoe. Listen to Zoe. Listen to Zoe. Listen to Zoe. Okay, uh, Zoe, go ahead. Good try. <laughs> you have to bifurcate it. Did she deserve the honor? Probably not. Is she brave? 
course she's brave. All those years invested as, as this sports legend to come out transgender is horribly difficult. It is the most difficult thing you can do. I've been overseas. I've flown uh, helicopter missions, surveillance missions. I've been shot, stabbed. Being brave is being yourself. And being transgender is it's about the bravest thing you can do. Did she deserve the award? Yes. Why are we mainstreaming delusion? Uh, it's not delusion. Why, why would delusion. you call it delusion? Because... Bruce Caitlyn Jenner, I'll call him Caitlyn Jenner. No, because it's that's her. The, You're not being polite to the pronoun. Because it's disrespect. Okay, forget about the disrespect. Facts don't care about your feelings. It turns out that every chromosome, every cell in Caitlyn Jenner's body is male, with the exception of some of his sperm cells. You it turns out that his sperm is male. Wait, I need it to. turns out that he still has all of his male appendages. But How this, he feels on the inside is irrelevant to the question of his biological sex. I'm not, I don't I'm agree with that. I'm not on that train. <laughs> I'm not on that train. <laughs> you you broken, she wants to be called she. I'm going to call her she. I just have a problem with the message and the messenger. Zoe, well, let's, let's, now let's, I'm going to do two things. I want to re reiterate what Zoe said, which is the bifurcation of the courage to come forward after a lifetime as a male and a certain kind of a male versus did she deserve this award. Listen, the awards, what are award ceremonies except oh, no. an opportunity to catch some eyes? Especially the ESPN. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so ESPN, well, well done, ABC. Yeah. They did exactly what their job was, to attract <laughs> eyes. They did it. That's what award ceremonies are for. But in terms of the science behind gender uh, dysphoria, you, you're very familiar with that. So very it's, familiar. It, it's not about the chromosome. Excuse me, the chromosomes within we our both know nuclei. Yeah, chromosomes go ahead. Chromosomes don't necessarily mean you're male or female. Gender. With gender. Gender of identity. Go ahead. Now, so Especially, what, but even so, you have a thing like Kleinfelter's syndrome. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics? Or well, well, no, what no. Are your genetics. I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, I know. Well, yeah. but wait, to be fair, but to be, no, but but to be fair, but to be fair, you're actually being hey guys, rude. You're and, that, no, 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 and that's no, no, no. not fair. I'm sorry. It's not rude to say that someone who is biologically a male sir. is a male. You just someone who is biologically sir. male is a male. But Mr. So. Shapiro, you know, you knew very well that what saying that to Zoe would be. Would be egregiously insulting. It's not a matter of insulting or inflammatory. It is. A no, well, well, you sir, 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 no, you're, sir, you're right. Sir, hey, uh, on, a, on the on paper, okay. what yeah. is a yeah. fact is a fact, and I, yeah, I, I can't deny that. This but you knew that going in that that to say that to Zoe would be aggressively insulting. It's a matter of aggressively insulting. It is. It's the entire discussion is whether we are embracing mental illness and delusion as a society. That's the entire discussion. No, well, no, 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 no. But that's, well, you're avoiding the fact. You're here, avoiding the fact. Something. You want to talk facts. You're avoiding the fact. You're not a dumb man. You knew that saying that to Zoe would be incredibly hurtful. Stop, stop it. Roll on the last word here. You haven't had a chance. And then, you know, there's, then some, gotta... there's some very startling statistics that are out that say that 80% of us know somebody who's gay or, 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 or bisexual or even transvestite or lesbian. But only 1% of us know somebody who is in transition. So this is a new discussion for us. A lot of it is very scary for a lot of people. But that's, I think, whether we agree with the whole Caitlin transition or not. The reality is that we are in a state as humanity right now where we need to exercise a little bit more tolerance we need to understand the things that we don't understand a bit more instead of making inflammatory comments maybe we have a little bit more tolerance we'll see. that's what i we'll think see. The we'll keep this was. going we'll keep it going but later we're gonna no no aggression no violence we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna caitlin jenner she was honored with the arthur ash courage award last night at the espies there's speculation that the award was payback for having given diane sawyer her first interview with Jenner on ABC and ASPN are part of the same corporation, of course, the Disney family. And ABC tells Los Angeles Times, quote, there is absolutely no connection between the interview and the award. There's simply no truth to that claim. Back with Sam, Rolanda, and Mike, and in the audience, Shagoon, Zoe, and Ben. All right, so, Zoe, it, it, you're in that piece, you're saying it wasn't a transgender going at their own pace. It was a product rollout. What are the liabilities to the human being Caitlyn Jenner as a result of being a part of this product roll rollout. Well, you can't sustain that type of energy. You cannot sustain that type of fame. Things shift. You have to reinvent yourself. But I think at some point this comes crashing down because along with all this, you know, adulation and, and hype, eventually you, you find out if you, you're really in an existential crisis because what's my life really going to be like? Will it be?
You have to deal with people like this, the hatred, the people that, you know, that, that come out against you and, no and say... We'll call you delusional, it wasn't case. Hatred, yeah, so. that's hatred. Okay. This is just somebody that's... that's I don't hate you. I yes, have sympathy for you. I feel terrible for you. No, no, you do hate. You're consumed with hatred. That is who really? you are. You're a little you know man. Me? You're a little man. Let's yeah, not, actually, I do. Let's stick to the topic. Let's, let's not let's not these persons. But I mean, that's okay. He can be whatever he wants. But the point is, right? That's what this is all about, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. And but there's ramifications for hate speech. But the point what is are those that ramifications. Let me finish. Go ahead, finish, sorry. Little boy. Still, Zoe. Okay. Zoe. Uh, so, I'm sorry. It's all, everybody. Sorry. Come on. Buttons are being pushed. Go ahead. The, the whole point is that Jenner will. This will come crashing down. Okay. Because well, it, like like in other reality shows, Mike, I saw a Facebook post where there was 30 reality shows that had, uh, contestants or participants who had died within a year or two of their of their shows. And right. I was looking, I was scrolling through that on Facebook. Something like 85 percent of them was suicide. Right. It's incredible. It's it's like kind of becoming the quarterback before you've ever even played football. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a, a definite kind of build up to getting that type of attention well, and now this too in the face of all these mag these tremendous changes in who this person is and their life and their lifestyle and their family issues all that is sort of now around this arousal I of think the Caitlin's built for it I really do this is a let's not forget this is a world-class athlete who's dealt with pressure her entire life who knows how to speak to herself and pump herself up who, who pump herself up who knows the difference between perse perseverance more than any other person that's a non-athlete I think that this is her mission in life and if I could ask you because I'm still harping on some of the things that you mentioned earlier Back to Ben to sure. Ben you uh, you come from like in your mind a moralist right uh, it, you no, think I come from a basic biological reality but okay it's not a moral just, thing if, if, if somebody wants to mutilate their body that's their it's choice not mutilation but can we just talk about cutting off testicles is mutilation can we talk that's about that's not the actually fact what they do though right